so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. We continue with this prayer burial service in honor of our mother, Mrs. Mercy Isi Obin Dako, and our father, Thomas Coleman. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll sing the Praetorian hymn numbered one, which is also the Methodist hymn ten. Now thank we all our God. We'll sing the first three stanzas. Please let us rise to sing. The third stanza for the last. Please let us sit and pray. We give you praise and thanks, most high God, for the gift of life that you have given to us today. The word of the Lord says that we slept and we knew nothing, but your grace did sustain us. We thank you for the grace given us to witness this day and from the depths of our hearts we say thank you we are thankful unto you for the lives of our mother mrs mercy isi obin dako and our father mr thomas kuma we thank you for the lives they enjoyed whilst on this earth and we are thankful unto you for using them to be a blessing to their families, their churches, people that came into contact with them, and the world at large. Father, in your own wisdom and in your own time, you called them to be with you. And we are thankful unto you for the life that they are enjoying, even as they are with you. Lord, as we have met this morning to say a final goodbye to them, we pray in the name of Jesus 
that your presence would be with us. Lord, take us through and let all the things that we will do here bring glory to your holy name. We thank you for our unanswered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take a scripture reading from Psalm 121 and we'll read from verses 1 to 8. Psalm 121, reading from the verse 1 to 8. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. Amen. So the GRA choir would lead us to sing some choruses whilst we do the filing past. This filing past would be done by the family. So we would ask the family to do the first filing past. Thank you. We would we'll ask, ask the size person to direct the families to do the filing pass. Thank you. 
by lane pass by families continues.
Ada Thomas ada Poma. Ada Edwin Fat Edwin Fat Edwin Fat Edwin Fat Edwin. Ada Kofi Tom Edwin Fat Edwin. Mau demri fa demri fa demri fa di Eja Kofi Tom Ensuna Busia Ewo Boy Mau demri fa di O Ayensu Koka Ene Aidan E Busia Ewo Boy Mau demri fa di Demri fa di Demri fa di Eja Ebiu Eja Thomas Hudson Colma Eja Gumu Brebre Obrem Pongnan Tim Brebre Eja Thomas Hudson Colma Eja Kofitop Okuna Fuma Demri Fedio Mary Joyce Ampong Colma Okuna Fuma Demri Fat Demri Fat Demri Fedio E Mama Odie a mama would be Eja Kovitop Thomas Hadden Kwame and Apenyin Koman Oma Demiri Fat Demiri Fat Demiri Fat Dwee Josephine Amawoo Koman Oma Demiri Fat Demiri Fat Dwee Sophia Ekwia Tiwa Sapo Oma Odeo Eja Benedicta Adwa Praba Koman Umano mau demiri fedi, umano mau demiri fedi. Eja Thomas Hudson Coleman, eja di obrepongan tiprebre, obrepongan tiprebre, obrepongan tiprebre. Wei mianum si gumu brebre, eja kufitop. Wei Mianum George Coleman, Oba Penning Nana Coleman, Abaka Coleman, Ayensu Coleman, Anita Coleman, Wei Yinama O Demiri Fedi, Demiri Fedi, Demiri Fedi, Wei Nenanum, Wei Senum, Wei So Kwan So Kuse Kuse, Messi S C O Ben Da Gui. Demi Fabio, Demi Fabio, Demi Fabio, Bafo Abuko Kofia Otiebi, Enum Esikuma Hini, Oma Demi Fabio Wati, Esi, Bafo Se Adai Na Uko Wankra, Anko Krao, Edikavu, Bafo Se Adai Na Uko Wankra, Anko Menao, Edi Kamfu Messi Esi Obindako Bafo Abu Kofi Otu Suye Bieng Eye Enuma Si Kuma Hini One Nana Numi Nini Na Esi Gomu Bre Bre Gomu Bre Bre Bafo Se Esi Udi Esi Oja Bo Uwa Bo Dingo Nuwa Fa Tabu Ume Shia Wati Esi bafu se udi esi ya bawa bodingo nuamfa pantame shiau wati bafu sadi chio dasio ene mwa bebre au de bwano Messi esi obinda ku bafu sadi chio dasio odasi esi umano ma unantui nana ya usapo amwa nana pepra bwa chida kuwa. Stella, Ivy, Ekusika, Obing Dako, Ellen, Obing Dako, Nom, Wosesi, Opansu Kuse Kuse, Opansu Kuse Kuse, Opansu Kuse Kuse, Kumansi, Eh, Eja Nokon, Eja Thomas Hatton Kuman, Eja Manumizu, Akura Kufitom, Monio, Monio, eh, 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 Kumasi, eh, Siapono, Wama Monio, eh, Abra, eh, Kwame Kuma University, no, Science and Technology, Kumasi, 
University Domino was a Mary Joyce, I'm from Coleman, Okunafu. Also, Brampong and Tibre Bre. Munianu. Oma Debri Fa 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 Mame esi apokuma Mame ekwa fuwa Woma debrifa Mame esi mensima Mame adua amitsa Mame tikwaba Mame esi betu Obinda ko ebusie we kropong ekwa pim Eh Set a crofi, my debrifa. A yo bartending charity, a crofinum. Wigginess of one soap was a quisset. Of one soap was a quisset. A Jack Thomas has a coman. A Jack of it up. A corne busia, a walk pacumdo. A great wigginna, my debrifa. Messi, SC, Obinda, Akwe, Ebusiano, Maldemiri, Fedio, Kone, Ebusie, Wo, Kakum, Dugwe, Koman, Ebusie, Wo, Kepus, Anona, and Insuna, Ebusiani, Nina, Maldemiri, Fedio, Ayensu, Koka, and Aidan, Ebusiano, Edia Thomas, and Koman, Ebusiano, Maldemiri, Fedio, and we'll see how much they've been fed to you. S.C. of Indaco. S.C. of Indaco. Osu. Osu. And we'll see how much they've been fed to you. And we'll see how much they've been fed to you. And we'll see how much they've been fed to you. Opa, Messi, SC, Papin Dabo, Opa, so Kose Kose. Opa, so Kose Kose.
Can we have the band wrapping up? Please, we we'll take some tributes from friends and families gathered here this morning. These are tributes that will not be read as part of the main burial service. So if you have a tribute to our mother and father, please come up stage and read it to us. Thank you. Please, when we start with the burial service at 9 o'clock, we'll take only few tributes. And so we are calling on you, if you have a tribute to present, this is the time to do so. So from friends, grandchildren, nephews, nieces, cousins, this is the time to do so. If we have tribute from siblings, grandchildren, friends, people that worked with our father and our mother, please come upstage and read for us. Jerry Band, whilst we wait for the tributes, please give us some choruses.
Please, we can be wrapping up as we start with the tribute. Thank you. We stand here today in loving memory of our amazing landlady. Today, we gather to honor the life and legacy of a remarkable woman who touched the heart of many who had the privilege of knowing her, our beloved landlady. Her presence in our lives was a beacon of light, radiating warmth, kindness, and compassion to all who crossed her path. From the moment we stepped into her home, she welcomed us with an open arms, treating us not just as tenants, but as cherished members of her extended family. Her boundless generosity knew no bounds as we went above and beyond to ensure our comfort and well-being. Whether it was a warm smile and a listening ear after a long day or a helping hand in terms of need, she was always there, ready to offer support and solace without hesitation. But it was not just her act of kindness that endeared her to us. It was her genuine love and concern for each one of us as individuals. She took the time to learn our stories, share in our joy, and offer words of encouragement during life's inevitable challenges. In her presence, we found a sense of belonging and acceptance that transcended the walls of our shared residence. Her home was not merely a place of reside. It was a sanctuary of love, laughter, and cherished memories. Whether it was the aroma of her home-cooked meals, or the air, or the sound of her infectious laughter, her presence brought joy and warmth to our lives each and every day. As we mourn her passing, let us take comfort in knowing that her spirit will live on in the countless lives that she touched and the hearts she forever changed. Though she may no longer walk amongst us, her legacy of love and kindness will endure as a testament to the extraordinary woman that she was. To our amazing landlady, we offer our deepest gratitude for the love, laughter, and light you brought into our lives. You will dearly be missed, but your memory will live on in our hearts forever. Rest in peace, and you left an indelible mark on our soul. And for that, we are eternally grateful. With love and found memories. Good morning to all, and good morning to the pastors. Elders here, chiefs, members of the Akrofi family and the Coleman family and the entire mornings this morning. Thank you for your presence here this morning. And I stand here this morning to read on behalf of my mother, who is um, AC's auntie. AC, my heart was so broken when I heard of your departure. How could it turn its back on you in the prime of your life? Nevertheless, I know you are in a much better place. No day passes me without thinking of you. But I take consolation in the wonderful things we did together. You brought me so much joy with your long conversations on the phone. Your endless care for me is unspeakable. Now I look through the window. To see if you're coming to see me. I pick up the phone to call. Then I remember you no more. 
as you worked so hard, not for yourself alone, but for everyone else to enjoy. My dearest daughter, the true queen of my heart, thank you and God bless you indeed to be it again. Sleep well, my daughter. Now I stand to speak on behalf of my sister who is not here presently. And, and she is a cousin to AC and she is Naja. AC, I'm lost for words to think that you know more. The memory you have left on our minds is your kindness towards humanity. You work hard at everything, AC. Always thinking of a business venture. I will always remember when you came back from AFS in America, wearing your American clothes without even asking you. You were so glad to share everything you had with us. AC, I can say thank you and the Lord give you the true crown that you deserve. And now I speak for myself and my name is Genevieve and I'm a cousin to AC. Oh, AC, why? This is the question I asked myself every day when you come to mind. Your death made me understand deeply the scripture in John 10, 10, the devil comes to, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. There is hope when I read the next verse. When Christ said, I have come that ye may have life and have it more abundantly. There is hope in the Lord. Your may, you see, you work tirelessly to help everybody who came your way. Some took advantage of you, yet never stopped you from doing good. You took so much of your aunt Mancha, who is my mother. In fact, even to the last day of your departure, when no one knew that was the end. My last conversation was about how we were planning a celebration and giving me details of what you were going to do. AC, I will cherish every moment we've spent together, the laughter and our little co-concern. Sad and broken indeed are the hearts that truly love you. You are in the light that shone. It may seem like it's been taken away, but the Lord is faithful, so faithful. AC, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, your beautiful crown awaits you in heaven. Thank you. AC, thank you all. Hello. A tribute by Mr. Kinslin and Asapon, son in law. Words are not enough to write or talk about my dear father in law. He welcomed me into his family by giving her a beautiful and encouraging daughter. I always look forward to having a conversation with him. His death's knowledge of life was remarkable. We share a common interest in music and sports. Dada, as I affectionately call him, will deeply be missed. Rest well in the bosom of the Lord. Amen. Tribute by Philomena Coleman, daughter-in-law. We thank God for the wonderful gift he gave us to be our father-in-law. For many complained about their in-laws, but daughter was exceptional. 
that I was a man with great strength and knowledge. He was a shining example of courage and compassion as well as honor and love. We are grateful to be able to address him, Dada. He was a role model and source of inspiration for us and our family. He had a significant impact in our lives. His kindness, wisdom, and love will be cherished and remembered always. Our hearts ache with his absence, but we celebrate the incredible person he was. His great-grandchildren always ask of him when they visit the house. We are so grateful for your love. May, you, may your soul rest well with the Lord. Demrifa to you. Amen. Good morning. Tribute by the family of Kona Ibrazi Kakumuru. With our heart as vast as the sky and as warm as the sun, you embraced each member of our family with boundless love and unwavering support. You were the pillar upon which our family stood, always guiding us with wisdom and compassion. Your selflessness knew no bound. You lived each day with the sole purpose of seeing us strive and succeed. Your greatness, joy was witnessing the achievement and happiness of everyone in the family. You taught us the value of unity and the importance of standing by one another through thick and time. Your belief in our potential fueled our dreams and inspired us to reach the stars. Your legacy of love and dedication will forever be engraved in our heart. As we carry on your legacy, we will strive and emulate your kindness, generosity, and unwavering devotion to the family. Though you may no longer walk beside us, your spirit will continue to guide us as we navigate life journey. Your memory will serve as a beacon, life, beacon of life, emulating your path and reminding us of the extraordinary man you were. Rest in peace, dear uncle and grandfather. Your love will live in our hearts for eternity with all our love and gratitude. Thank you. Dear people of God, we'll continue with the service. It is now time for us to do some filing past and the GRE band will lead us to do so. So if you have been here for some time, but you have not taken time to pay your last tribute to our mother and father, this is the time to do so. Thank you.
Ashe size persons, please let's direct with the file pulsing.
Please, can we be wrapping up as we take the next set of previews? Thank you, GRE Fund. Hallelujah. Amen. Before we read the tribute, I want to sing one of mommy's favorite songs, and then afterwards, we do the reading. Amen. Oh, 
Oh, mommy's favorite song. Yeah, Oh, the Oh, Yes, and to roll or cow da Sawodo we rurade wa kumemu wa dinyine na sewodo wo yonko wo do wunia Sewo uwa Asasi eni dani butu Bripo tutu Goku pumukra Ensuro Ensuro Oka wo Hallelujah Tribute by nephew and nieces. Mommy, as we affectionately call her, was the greatest role model. She was more than an auntie to all of us. She would step in any time one needed any form of assistance. When it was time for any of us to get married, she would either take full charge of one aspect of it or make sure everything was successful. We all looked forward to spending our vacation with her either throughout the time or part was spent there. She would make sure to get things for other siblings who couldn't make it where and during the holidays. She made sure every one of us took our Christian life seriously. She was a prayerful and God-fearing person. Anytime any of us called about a problem, she would get someone to help. At the mention of Madame Essie Coleman, everyone was willing to help even in death. Her name is still opening doors and opportunities for us. Thank you, Mommy, for teaching us everything we know today. Our unifier, our confidence, our pride, our love. We miss you and will forever cherish our memories you have left with us. We love you, Mommy. Rest in the bosom of the Almighty God till we meet again. Amen. Tribute by grandchildren. Dada Coleman, old Tom, as we all used to call him, was a disciplinarian. And it was not only to those in the family, but even to outsiders who needed that guidance from him. We would have wished to spend more time with him on earth, but I guess his creator needs him more. All his grandchildren and great-grandchildren always wished to be by his side in his bedroom anytime we visited. His last days with us are going to be memorable ones because even on a sick bird, he still managed to make us smile or laugh at a point by either cracking a joke or commenting about the fact that he is an old man. And so the nurses and anyone who handled him needed to treat him as such. We were and are still saddened by his demise. But when we look around us, we are comforted by the fact that he fought a good fight and made sure we were all in good hands before he finally took a bow. 
Daddy, grandfather, you will forever be missed. Rest well, our gallant man, as you soldier on. Amen. Please, we are doing the last filing past, and so if you have not done so, the GRA band would lead us to do that. The last filing past. Please get closer and pay your last tribute to our father and mother. Thank you.
please, this is the last filing plan pass. So if you just came in, please do well to get closer and pay your last tribute. The last filing pass. If you just walked in, please get closer and pay your last tribute to our father and mother. This is the last filing pass. Please draw closer and pay your last review to our father and mother. GRE band, let's wrap up as we take the last set of tributes. Tribute by the staff and students of the Department of Land Economy, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 5. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. 
If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Romans 14, 7 to 8. The news of the death of Mr. Hilton Coleman was received with mixed feeling on the corridors of the Department of Land Economy on KNUSD campus. A feeling of sadness because our dear colleague and friend had departed to the netherworld. At the same time, however, we remain thankful to God for a life well lived and for the gifting of such an illustrious individual to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mr. Coleman joined the university in 1959 as a technician in the Faculty of Architecture, Town Planning and Building Technology. After a working stint with the Public Works Department in the Civil Service, and also as a site engineer with Mrs. G. Walter and Slater, the construction firm that put up the Okonfo Anoche Teaching Hospital in Kumase. His expertise was in cartography, cadastral draftsmanship, architectural draftsmanship, building technology, and surveying. He assumed duty in the university at a time when it was witnessing very rapid development of its infrastructural facilities within a very difficult and challenging terrain. He was part of the construction team that put up the permanent buildings on campus, including the teaching blocks, bungalows, and horses. In recognition of his sterling qualities and innovativeness, one Professor Fruetin, the University of the Department of Building Technology, recommended him to the Department of Land Economy as Chief Technician to help grounding the beginning department. He brought his rich experience in building construction to bear on the department and played a pioneering role in the establishment of the studio work of the students of the BC class. His working life in the university saw him training and mentoring hundreds of students in the practical aspect of building construction. Mr. Coleman retired from active service in 1992 as chief technician after 33 years of continuous and dedicated service to the university and the land economy department. On 11th of December 2011, the board of the Department of Land Economy decided to host some retired staff of the department and honor them with citations and some gifts in recognition and appreciation of their outstanding and dedicated contributions to the growth and development of the department over the years. Mr. Coleman was one of such distinguished personalities honored. He was almost 90 years at that time, and much as he had wished to be present at the ceremony in person to renew his bonds with his colleagues on campus, his physical strength would not allow him to endure the strength of traveling all the way to Kumasi. He was, however, ably represented by two of his children, Mr. Thomas Hutin Coleman, Jr., and his daughter, Madame Josephine Coleman. At the ceremony, past students of the department who were privileged to have been tutored by Mr. Coleman paid glowing tribute to his dedication, patience, and sense of humor that helped them to understand and grasp the complexities and the intricate shades of their studio work. Mr. Coleman indeed distinguished himself in his service to KNUST and the Department of Land Economy. His footprint touting his selfless and dedicated service are edged on the corridors of the department from which successive generations of staff and students will take inspiration. Today, a colleague, a friend, a mentor, 
and an inspirer goes home. Though we share in the grief of the family, we do not do so as those without any hope. We nurture the conviction that we shall see our colleague again on the resurrection. Fare thee well, our gallant colleague and friend. Rest in the bosom of the good Lord. Amen. Tribute by Mrs. Dorothy Adote Nyanu, popularly known as Didi. We be, with the heaviest heart, I say farewell to my childhood friend, Mercy Esi Coleman. We became friends from the age of 13 when I joined my mom in Kumasi Tech Campus to be precise. My mom and Ace's mom were very good friends. So therefore, it wasn't strange, we also became good friends. Growing up on campus was great fun. Although we attended different schools, we did a lot of things together together and we ended up at the KNUNST and at the same faculty. After university, we all moved to Accra and lived together in a rented outhouse at CFC Estate Domain. There was a problem with the house, so we had to move out. I traveled outside for a while, but came back to continue with our friendship, which had gradually turned into sisters from different mothers. Essie had a great sense of humor. You love to laugh, worry, and that you will, you will bring me some. I got the shock of my life when AC came back in the evening with a driver carrying a big margarine bucket full of palm nut soup. The soup was enough to serve about 20 people. And the ingredients, the less said about it, the better. She was so kind to everybody who came her way. I don't understand why you should die at this time when we had just started enjoying and you made those around you happy. You were a unique woman and I thank God for making you a part of my life for more than 50 years. Your kindness is beyond measure and you made sure you always stop by to greet me any time you passed in front of my house. When you passed by one Friday morning, you said one of your cousins will prepare palm nut soup for you. I said, ah, Isi, wamame kon ado. 
you said I shouldn't, you said I shouldn't a retirement. Well, it is said, and I thank God once again for being a very good sister and a friend. The pain is hard, and I don't know when my tears will stop flowing for you. We've come a long way, and you know when we see each other, we say, Obagbo ni ohe, ohe kebab. Obagbo ni ohe kebab. Or to wait, you will die without holding kebab. Esi, esi, why? Hmm. Rest in perfect peace with your maker till we meet on the resurrection day, my good friend. I read this tribute on behalf of Mrs. Dorothy Adote Nyanu, a.k.a. Didi. Thank you. Dear people of God, we are bringing the pre-burial service almost to a close. And at this point, we would hand it over to the family to pay their last respect and also to close their caskets. Thank you. A domini a dupong a shem a nananum a nanum ni a janum a obin nim at the chimwasem obin nim jonku crea at the bechesu mpenyingsi obin nim near oribu or dabbing chow aquasha damrama no aquaseni say sorry qua now babby huni a chemu and when you only pay bia then who jija. Uh, Eja Coleman or the Nehuji Jai Pa Eye Esi the Nehuji Jai Pa Sabri Water Krako Namani B. Wahua as I say Ye Ye Maung Ainti Meti Kakumdo Gwe Kakumdo Chiami and a Wong Penyun Wawaha me pese wo ka sembi kakra ni eti cho nananma we siemu wo ha oye ensonum kontanje bebun asofo we siemu wo ha wo me nyina yanya kure yemfreye nyo se chami penin wo te akesemizi ma madam men kasa kakra ana kakra o hun oye Open your column, na the bar, is he? No, has some now, maybe in a hair, but it came. I am a sir, Yammy Bo, Impa, the same or Obasa Cedar, or what I am to in Safran. Say, Otto and Safran, the ma, or what I a busia, ah, a jenny fuming. What can be be a crack, what a chin, a hen or crack, a tassel free. On in there, the Bosha. People here and there, why am I Mr. Coleman? Okaji, it be the baby. I the resika, and then for the and to ma, and then the baby. Ebusiya atnasi, umlebi ya suti na imfe ekwankura ya namoda. Is it me? Ipakure the baby a osida man ya zama man. So anu sufi washwa make us say why am I me esi? Anna, no papera. If you saw her, if you saw Banoho, I fam, ah, obedient be fee, no obedient be fee no ho. Tano so, the me in Pacura, or see the means so, or ha, and then so, oh, yeah, ha, let's see, be move with beer, and our unkind chair in Pacure, none of so unkind chair, nay, uncle. There, Mr. Coleman, be be now, obedient fee, Anna, and the Bowen, or Famla, the Ebusia, wired and. What nasi? Some can the movie 
ana mesan so ba tsuyere de sisi ada akatum no bro e ma eja ne eba ni wa kama hobofo na sa se su nti se bi wo akwenje ze bi a odi ja hona no so ebusua we gbe ekwan oza to me se me siri bi ma me se me siri bi ma ana o chere se me se kolo ma na na ba wodi bi ka o omaka se me se kolo ma na na ba so no so bi ze ho ka wa o ma emaka na sa sa su nti ana me se me siri bi mu de se ibi wo akwanje ze bi oze ma oye eja na eba no so akwan dem jo nanan mu fure ye so nom kontanji baibu no ba kon fure ye inya hen sampa na amande o ohoye eh amane won sai no ne onim de n sai de enti obi wo brebia opese or the best show on a new yum or the jaw on Panga. Utumeba Na Sado Codeno or the Bachelet. Say a merry dupu. Say a sika petia. Say a tama. Say a bribica cra. Never no kind a man who ain't in the age nigh. Mete said, Nipebu or bribia or per se. What the bachelet. And now what the beja on Pang. Oaha. Obe to me diaba. Ye will see my car crabby. Ye will see my car crabby. More brebia. Ope say, Modebek Japan. Ah, a kind of man. You, you are ho who be bree. If him yammy, I abba. You into wo brebia. Say en tama. Say ye brebi. Would be jano quang. A nuna a count. Nema. A man, a man, make a year, man can a bonnet, no one penny, me. Sir, ain't he? So, what they bar? Where you bet to me the amount? No, I can't. You bet to me the amount? No, I can't. Nanam Frey, or ye a sofo, and so on, and contangi. O my uncle Frey, Joe Nana, Chiamia, a tenegum, Manisana, Atwin, Saint Payama, fair fair fair, the mother. Why am I me Frisia, my old canny? Nay, uncle Pa Blebo Pana, I mean, what to insaf any Canada no owe. And see, I'm out to insaf, Rana, not all this, I can't allow her now. Dabby. Or off play, or yeah, and you mean him. Oba cancer. Oba cancer. We meet in Hanaka. I say, okay, can you do cool, fufu, and you, and I, not up with you, or send Obo and Tumano. This is a column, eh? Aza, we are called Felicia. What did you all cry? Mediana, Madonna, Serdado, a more piao. I mean, she don't. I mean, she don't. I mean, so I'm more human. I don't cry. I mean, you could ask me, Jim. Mammy, I see the was. And you, I just say, no, man's an honor, you goody. Be war. A coin, you be a busy, papa, and a cow, and then put a permanent scar. No, so I'm a can be. But Sunday, I can't turn no bro. Na Adishi Wakaka Ewazanansa. Man is sit up. So this is part of our traditions and customs that when this departed soul is leaving the earth, uh, the person 
may need some items to be used in the other world. This is part of the Akan traditions and customs. So at this point in time, we have numerous, numerous items given by friends, family members, loved ones, and this uh, person departing will take these items to be used in the other world. So uh, at this point, we are uh, inviting a few people, a few people, as example of what many have done. So we thank those who presented these items. We thank them very much on behalf of the family. So, Mandan Suado, Nanam Flay, or Yanso, Nom Contag, or Melkum Flay. Ayo, a manzana, Yazana, you couldn't. And say, I, my messy, not no papa. Oya and a nanum, number, and a worker say, O kind of ma, Ugita, who good? Sika and Petsia. Nana, no, my me. If he did your conno at the Yame and Petsie, and he did your con. We are Nama and we are Joe Man and Chiaro, we are and we are no. Oh, mammy, now one sister is he. Also, Ukita, handkerchief, a fufu, a beard, Sikabano, a bar, ne a jay, one day, na Udru, a quema, without a son, man is sit up. Joe, a girl, oh yeah, a bar pain, my me, endo male, no, all the kissy. I said, Why be be a la? A dama, no one can for. Oh yeah, open you, Coloman. In you, now so, I won't be a so, no, come on, boy. Let's ask a sincere. But eh, now get you fufu, and bano bano. Oh, no, Coloman, eh, a train, a train, no. Mahoma, come on home. Let's ask a sincere Saraqua Montum in Joe, crack, 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 Yo, yo, yo. Yo, Mr. Quero Mane, in say ha. Why are you fast? I am a cow. I am a cow. Or Kakumudo, Sisiara. Nobody is in a way on the dado. In say, Monica, I send there. What two busy? So, all two busy now. And not yet, one and a. Now, you're in a military. Ayo, twenty cities. Nana, je, why yala aqua, ubiso, a quando, ubiso, a quanda, and I debuted out to answer. Ayo, and as I'm a hoa, ubiso, a quando. Home a cruel fray, eh, I am some pa, a mania, all hoy. So the one departing this earth is like a traveler and uh, needs some money to travel with, to travel with. Uh, you saw this woman with a baby on the back. The baby was named after Mr. Coleman. So if Mr. Coleman is departing, uh, the baby 
uh, has contributed a few Ghana cities to be given to uh, these elderly women in charge, you see, for the departed journey to give these few cities, 20, yes, for Mr. Coleman to uh, travel with. In fact, these items become many, you see, many. They are collected and they are so many. And a few of the items are given to those departing and the rest becomes a fund. It becomes a fund. The clothes or the cloth, uh, the rings, gold rings, the handkerchiefs and all that, it becomes a fund so that in some years to come, if maybe a woman gives birth and the husband is not yet in, some of these things are given to dress this woman. Or if it is an engagement, they use part of these things to help, to help uh, pronounce the, the identity of the family. So thank you, thank you. The burial service is about to start, so we are not going to prolong, to prolong these uh, presentations, but we have, I think, a few, a few of these items. And after that, we'll give uh, the podium to Reverend Kisi and the clergy to I mean, start with the burial service. So we are not going to use a lot of your time. Thank you. Cho, and I'm in Flay, and so I'm content. You make room for you. O son, a bean in sea, ye be a one one. O son, I saw a yew. I had there made the free driver, O son, or bo. Some mature or boa, and a mature there, or ye, and Tessy, ah, see, Sierra. The bucket to nature, you know, catching a buff wincy. Driver or boa, no urgent her to kiss. Naka si ayen de. Abra ayen mame ante si nan tu yi. Obo ni bebre. O tunu fo. O shen un kuna yi. A futu pa. O zem man. Nasa ase su nti. Sa ante si wada nin se be un kumunda. O si nane drava obo. O tan o. No o shen. O shen hain. O hen ye juma. O san so. O nyan no waka fo no. A bepaim, a bepaim de ma, Anna, a boa, dem a bema fan to Anna, and Tessie, wafu to pa, is it to me see, motu basin. See, say, can I a car, nature, or to the basin to come home? A boy in a hama, or a candle, Okita, la handkerchief for fui. Scat a barno, and Tessie, e as a, or the joke one. You do, a quema. Let's come at the war. At our own suit, not a no money sit up. Show a boy. A pen I've been. Bobbin, Mr. Obbin, so Ossi, not so or two, and Tessie, it is him. And I say, I'm here to insult flower, let any ink is in coma on show. I've been on so many. Na hankechi fufufui. Oku te minsemi. Onsi minsemi. Na wansanka. Ama idu akwanda. Ubiso amandia. Eye bine aka. Cho. Ante gladis. Ante si. Uyanku bila abono ujine hei. Nusu. Ukite hankechi. Mpati ya bwa ano. Ante si. Wansanka. Bani sidam. Ebi ninti. 
Bine, ți Jo, te se, o ya kofu na wo kase yo. Na na himma, mona. Ja se himma. Malia himma. O ya wa kan wa bom. O patie ni, o bo hakachi fa no. Wo san kan? Na shishe, na ho ya fe, ma ni sidam. Eh, eh ye ma yure hini suhum. On a jasi hima you wanna wabahe all the way from Suhum to make this presentation. Thank you. The next presentation comes from uh, the widow is his uh, husband, Bafo Bafo Abuko Kofi the uh, second. If as he is departing this earth, uh, he has these items made up of cloth, uh, kente cloth, uh, this head kerchief, yes, and uh, a gold ring, and then this money to support her uh, in her travel to eternity. Also, we have uh, Mr. Coleman, Bafo has uh, this kente cloth for Mr. Coleman as he is departing this earth and uh, 50 cities uh, to support him in his travel. When he gets to eternity, he will have to meet uh, the elders and we have a bottle of this uh, alcoholic beverage uh, to pour libation when he gets to eternity. And also from the sons and the daughters of uh, Bafo Abuku and uh, Esi, if the mother is departing, they have this uh, uh, special cloth, yes for AC to use, or for the women in charge of the packing of these items, they must add these things for AC to take along. Also, there is this money for his, her travel. AC's daughter, Ellen or Bing Daku, uh, the in-laws, they have this beautiful cloth and uh, it's for AC, yes, to take along as she's departing. Thank them. We say thank you very much. We have Lomnava, a friend of AC. Uh, she has a, a handkerchief with money and a ring. Yes, we thank all of you. Nipenina, you've been a one penny warrior. Thank you. So now it's time for the burial service. Thank you, Reverend Kisi and the clergy. Thank you. So at this point, we'll invite the family to pay their last respects to our father and mother and also to clo close their caskets. Thank you. We'll take some choruses from the Red Church Choir as we close the caskets.
Eu warkra ako. Warkra ako. Sa a berma kuman. Ene ne ba esimrosa. Wa bo muruka butio aman koma jija. Ora ka se bua fo edom suru nu. Ni awan ko bin osi yanku. E ja kuman. Wa bo muruka butio aman koma jijo. Ye hu yanke ne yanu mukwe. Yanta ye nyade. Ba fo abuko kofi. O tu se bien. And num as you come here, on the nasty Belma Coleman reading kra, on the negire as he reading kra. So tell me, in India, in the hangang o nanso, a jaye be pen, as he ye be pen, a nunti seba ne sa Belma abuko kofi. Otu siya biyeng, oni e num, e si kuma mang, oni e okyape mang, oni akang mang, oni gana mang, wama adishi, okwanso kose, 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 e jako man, okwanso kose, 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 ma amye si, O kwansu kose, 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 kose.
GRE, can we have you pay your last respect before we begin with the burial service proper? Shall we be upstanding as we worship our God through this burial service? John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where. I'm going. We sing the Methodist hymn number 427 through all the changing scenes of life.
We end with verse 6. We begin this very service in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. We are grateful for the gift of life which you bestowed on each and every one of us. Lord, it has pleased you to call to eternity our brother and father Thomas and our sister Mercy. We are gathered as family, friends, and loved ones. To bid them farewell, we invite your holy presence to abide with us as we undertake this service. We pray that through your help, may all we do today bring honor and glory to your name, even as your son and your daughter into your eternal presence. We ask that you give us a good weather that we may complete this assignment in your name. We thank you and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue the service by singing the hymn, When Peace Like a River Attended My Way. We are just singing the first stanza. Please turn to page 46 of your brochure. The hymn or the song will be followed by the reading of the biographies. We'll take our father's own first, then followed by Mama Mercy Obendako. Please, you are, if you are able to stand, please do stand as we sing together. Thank you. 
Please let us sit as we take the biographies. We'll start with that of Mr. Thomas Coleman. Can we have Mr. T.H. Coleman doing this for us? We want to take the biography of our father, Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman. Life story of the late Thomas Hatton Coleman. The length of our days is 70 years, or 80 if we have the strength, yet the span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and they fly away. Psalm 90 verse 10. Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman was born on 18th March 1932 at Kakumdo, near Cape Coast, to Mr. Aurelius Benedict Coleman and Miss Mercy Adra Teria Hayford, both of Blessed Mary. For his primary education, Mr. Coleman attended AME Zion Primary School, Kumase from 1936 to 1940 and continued at Tridium Methodist Primary School from 1941 to 1944. At, his, at the secondary education level, Mr. Coleman attended Oforikrum Academy, Kumase, from 1945 to 1950 and obtained a Cambridge School Certificate in 1950. From his for his technical education, Mr. Coleman attended People Droughtmanship Survey Department, Cantonment, Accra, from 1951 to 1952. During that program, he specialized in cartography, cadastral drought and surveying. Mr. Thomas Hassan Coleman was employed as an assistant site engineer by um, Mansley Walker and Slate Builders from 1958, 1953 to 1954. Duties assigned to him included the following. He was in charge of KNUSC's first permanent buildings, example, teaching blocks, bungalows, halls, hall six, and E blocks. Mr. Coleman pursued further technical education by reading a three-year program in architect architectural draftsmanship and building construction with the public, work, public works department from 1954 to 1957. He was appointed as a technician to the Faculty of Ag Architecture, Town Planning and Building Technology at KNUST in 1959. He was then appointed as Chief Technician at the Department of Land Economy at KNUST in 1970 and retired in 1992 after 33 years of service. He served three years of contract as KNUST after retirement. 
Mr. Coleman established Atomic Hills Institute of Draftsmanship, a private draftsmanship school at a Sherman Estate in 1994. He ran the school with his two children, Thomas Hatton Coleman Jr. as the director of the school, Mercy A.C. Coleman as the organizer, and Thomas Hatton Coleman Sr. himself as their coordinator until 2002. Over the period, about 20 students were trained, some of whom are currently employed at Regimental Gray Estates in Accra. Mr. Thomas Hassan Coleman was married to Ms. Stella Abna Asaribia Akrofi of Blessed Memories and had three children with her, one boy and two girls. He also married Miss Mary Ample and had three children, three girls with her. After his 91st birthday in March 2023, his health started failing until his demise on 7th January 2024 at the University of Ghana Medical Center. Demi Fadye, Daye, Nami Infaunsie, till we meet again. Thank you. Life story of, of, the, of, of the late Mrs. Mercy A.C. Obin Daku, Nee Coleman, 1961 to 2023. The late Mrs. S. Coleman Obin Daku was born on the 24th of December, 1961 to Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman, senior, and Mrs. Stella Ivy Coleman, both of blessed memory at the Confanoche Teaching Hospital in Kumasi. He was the first female among her siblings of six, made up of five girls and one brother. Growing up, AC, as he was affectionately called, was a loving, active, vibrant, intelligent girl. He was so academically bright that he started reading the Daily Graphic at the age six. He enjoyed reading and learning so much that she would wake up at dawn around 2 a.m. and read till the following morning most times. This gave her several academic uh, upliftments. He was the first in her class from class one to class seven at Ereso Primary School. So he wrote the common entrance exams. She attended KNUSC Senior High School where he excelled as the girl's prefect. After the, her GCE O level, he gained an American Field Services Scholarship in North Carolina, USC, for a one-year exchange program. He lived with the Hughes Foster of Kalinda Jones family and gathered an enormous experience as an exchange student. He came back and attended now Laboni Senior High School for her GC advanced level. Due to her personality, excellence, and general good behavior, he was able to grab the honors and took the position of the senior girls prefect of the school out of norm. After her GCEA level at Laboni Senior High School, he again admission to the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology between September 1982 and October 1987, where he obtained the Bachelor of Science in Land Economy. He went out to achieve several educational qualifications, including postgraduate certificates and a diploma in public administration. He further obtained a postgraduate diploma in strategic management and leadership. Immediately after completion, he proceeded further to an executive master's program in business administration with a project management option at the Swiss School of Business Management. Upon completion, he was awarded a Global Leadership Excellence Award by the Swiss School of Business Management in August 2020. He was supported the Customs Division of Ghana Revenue Authority, where he served as a national service person at the Estate Department from February 1988 to November 1989. 
Due to her dedication to her duty and excellence in the performance of any role assigned to her, he was employed as a full-time estate officer, a role he played from November 1989, and he was promoted to the position of assistant commissioner in charge of estate until her retirement. He was a true example of equal capacity between genders. In her role as assistant commissioner in charge of development and estate, he excelled in the male-dominated sector, managing the international network of properties and assets for the institution, a task treated as mainly for men. Her tendency and relentless desire to reinvent and innovate shone so bright in the transformation and improving female staff ratios in her unit in the Ghana Revenue Authority. Under her administration, DRA as an institution has undergone a tremendous facelift in terms of infrastructure improvement for what he would have always remembered for. He was a leader, a philanthropist, social entrepreneur, and trailblazing champion for the advancement, of course, of women in Ghana. Her leadership skills were linked to a mother who would not sleep until her children are well and sound. To her, when the work must be done, it must be done without excuses and must be done right. He was a co-founder of Azar 117, foundation now Royal Promise non-profit organization with a global network of partners whose main aim or objectives is to help the poor and needy, especially the deprived children. He was a strong believer in the Lord. Her belief was demonstrated by her dedication to the orphanage started through their non-profit organization. Her source of strength was rooted in her deep conviction about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He was a strong Christian and believed in the authorities of the scriptures. He worshiped at the Accra Ray Church Manet Chapel and held the position as the vice president of the Women's Fellowship. By her conviction, he organized monthly all-night prayer services in the home and her family and friends for their total spiritual covenant. He was married to Bafo Abuko Kofi II, known as Nana Obin Dakon, chief of Enum Asikuma in the eastern region of Ghana, and blessed with four children, made up of two girls and two boys and three grandsons. He took great joy in cooking and was very hospita hospitable. He took delight in the country, both the young and old. Those close to her call her the lady of hearts because she always loved wearing hats. Without her hat, her dressing was incomplete. Today, he is no more with us, but we know that he is in the better place with our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. Aunt Yesi, mother of all, may your soul rest in perfect peace till we meet again in eternity. We'll continue the service by singing the Methodist hymn 4 to 8. I will praise my maker while I have breath. Just the first stanza. We'll do this one sitting. And it's also on page 46 of the brochure. So we'll take the next tribute by husband. 
that is Nana Obey Dako. Thank you. Thank you very much. The righteous perish, and no woman pondered it in his heart. Devout men are taken away, and no one understands that the righteous are taken away to be spared from evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest as they lie in death. In the quiet solitude of this moment, we gather to bid farewell to a soul so dear and cherished. My beloved wife, is she, this words of Isaiah remind us that the righteous sometimes leave us not in abandonment, but to find refuge from the troubles of this world. Is she, a righteous and devout wife, has found that peace, a tranquility that eludes our understanding. Our journey together began 25 years ago, and within six months of our first meeting, we knew we were a real and perfect match. Essie grace my life with love, laughter, and unwavering support. Her touch turned our home into a heaven of beauty and tranquility. And our family flourished under her nurturing care. Mommy, as I affectionately called her, embodied the qualities that reminded me of my dear mother and her nurturing spirit extended beyond our home to touch the lives of many. To countless individuals, she was nicknamed Auntie Essi, a mentor, and to many others, mother to all. Thanks to her boundless care and generosity, which embodied the purest essence of humanity. In her presence, hatred found no home, only warmth and acceptance. Essi effortlessly gave to everyone she encountered, be it food, clothing, shelter, counsel, or job, leaving an indelible mark of compassion on countless hearts. To her, care wasn't just an action. It was a way of being a testament to the boundless capacity of the human heart. Our shared passion for helping the deprived and destitute tightened the bond and became the cornerstone of our union. Mommy stood by my side, offering wise counsel and unwavering support in the face of enormous challenges. She encouraged me to reconnect with my roots, promising to assist me in ruling and succeeding. 
Her commitment to our community was truly extraordinary. Her commitment to our community was truly extraordinary. As a result, she was named the title the beginning of Enum Esikuma under the school name Awu Esi Tawia of Enum Esikuma. Just as she, she cared for her family with the devotion of a perfect mother, Esi extended her selfless love to the broader community. When the idea of establishing an NGO to assist the underprivileged took root, her effort, proactiveness, and ardent desire to promote the welfare of the needy, a resounding success. Her daily works were a reflection of a selfless attributes, leaving an indelible mark on those she touched. Essie was not just a life partner. She was my confidante, my advisor, and the embodiment of love in my life. The void left by a person is immeasurable, but a legacy of kindness and compassion will live on in the hearts of all those she touched. If you knew AC, you recognize a few things. She could do it all, and she, she had templates spinning at all times. She knew how to orchestrate a party and how to de decorate events by skillfully placing fabrics here and there, ending in a masterpiece. She knew her children like an author knows his book. She could explain their personalities, weaknesses, and their strength. She knew the things they needed to cause their character to grow. These are a few traits of my beloved wife, whose lifeless body lie before us this morning. The cruelty of death, its suddenness and finality has dealt a blow that reverberates through my heart since the news of her call to eternity. The stroke of his gavel has silenced the laughter, gentleness, and wisdom that define Isis's presence. Yet, even in the face of irreparable loss, I am reminded that the righteous, having walked uprightly, find rest in death. In the shadow of your absence, the world seems harsher, and each day is a lonely journey without you. You left for a visit to the children and grandchildren in the USC for a short medical review, but little did I know that it will be our final goodbye. Your motionless body now rests silent and still, a stark reminder of the void left in my world. You never spoke of leaving me alone to navigate this world without you. The silence echoes loudly, and the absence of your laughter 
our dialogues about TV series and the shared celebration of memorable events leave me yearning for the warmth of your presence. Birthdays, Valentine's Day, and every fellowship we once shared, now they bear the weight of your absence. The pain is excruciating, and the loneliness is an unwelcome companion. In this naked world without you, as I grapple with the reality of life without your physical presence, I find solace in the memories we created together. And your close fellowship with the good Lord. Though the physical realm may now separate us, my love, our love, remains an unbroken thread, weaving through the tapestry of our shared moments. In the vastness of eternity, you are forever etched in the deepest chambers of my heart. Where your love continues to breathe life into my every heartbeat. Until we reunite, my love for you transcends the boundaries of time and space. A bond unyielding even in the face of our temporary earthly parting. This isn't the way we wanted the story of your life to end with Yao, Pipra, and Aku so young. As we lay you to rest, ideally cherish the moments of your love your warmth and your boundless kindness. May your legacy inspire us to walk uprightly, to care for one another, and to continue the noble work you began. Till we meet again, my love, mommy. Thank you very much. Tribute read on, on behalf of Nana Bafo Abuko Kofi II, Chief of Enum Esikoma. The next tribute would be taken by Mary Joyce Ampon Coleman. That we do. You're that one special woman. I thought I'd never. With the strength to be gentle And the courage to be kind Though it hasn't all been roses Still I know you understand One of these nights We're sharing a dream gonna take you by the hand and lay you down on a bed of roses
favorite tune. Thank you. Tribute by wife, Mary Joyce Ampon Co-woman. As I sit down to pen this tribute, my heart overflows with both sorrow and gratitude. Today, I celebrate the remarkable life of Tommy, who touched the lives of so many and left an indelible mark on the family. My beloved Tommy, at the age of 92, has been back on his final journey, leaving being behind a legacy that will forever be in our hearts. Born in a time when the world was vastly different, you navigated life with a spirit of resilience and an unwavering commitment to your values. Our journey began at Bwedi Junction in Kumasi, where I was at first lowest point in my life. You gave me a helping hand, and from that day, I just knew I met a humble, strong, compassionate, and loving husband. Throughout our decades together, you were not only my partner, but also my confidant, my rock, and my greatest supporter. You love, your love was a constant source of warmth, providing a refuge in the stormy seas of life. As the matriarch of our family, you instilled in our six children, 10 grandchildren, and 13 great-grandchildren the importance of unity, respect, and culture, cultural pride. Your legacy extends far beyond the borders of our family. You were a pioneer, a tra trailblazer who challenged societal norms and paved the way for a better future. With each passing year, your compassion for education shone brightly inspiring generations to strive to, for knowledge and empowerment. Your 92 years were a medley of joy, laughter, challenges, and triumphs. Your favorite song you always like to play for me was Bed of a Race by Kenny Rogers. Such an amazing and sweet melody. Rest in peace, my love. Your legacy lives on in the hearts of those who were fortunate enough to know you, and your memory will be guiding, will be a guiding light for the generation to come. Thank you for a lifetime of love, compassion, companionship and a legacy that transcends time and place. Until we meet again, with all my love. Thank you. Tribute by wife of Thomas Tom Coleman. Thank you. Shall we now have the tribute? From the children of our dear mother, Mrs. Mercy Isi Coleman. Tributes by children, uh, Nanayao Ikusuka and Pepra. It's Monday morning. Mommy embraces the morning with a radiant spirit, rouses in us for school with a mix of gentle nudges and her spirited yellings, 
a prelude to a day filled with love. By 7 a.m., we are set, and she hurries to catch the custom bus at the junction right by the house. Tuesday afternoon, you can find her in the office surrounded by friends and colleagues, generously ordering lunch and filling the room with contagious laughter. Wednesday at 6, 6 p.m. brought a chorus of doorbells as mommy's many guests sought the warmth of her company. Juggling gifts and adjusting schedules, she exemplified an unwavering commitment to accommodating others. Despite the challenges of Thursday, with her various businesses demanding attention, pulling her from different directions, she navigated with grace, stopping by the site where her decoration team set up purple flowers. Friday nights transformed into vibrant parties where she reveled in beautiful decor, a lengthy guest list, and an energetic music. Her love for dance intertwined with her tendency to doze off amid the festivities. Saturday morning, she defied the notion of rest, bustling in the Texpo market for Saturday fufu. The house filled with the warmth of family and friends, and the front yard echoed with the laughter of neighborhood kids. The next thing you hear is kitty boobs and kitty bobs. Sundays, her day of birth and her day of rest, allowed her to dream of a life where Nanayao, Pepra, and Eku had a worry-free life and everyone's needs were fulfilled. In cherished memory, we honor the woman whose resilience, generosity, and grace shaped us. If we could embody even half of her spirit, the world around us would undoubtedly be tenfold better. Rest peacefully, mommy. Tribute by children. Nanayao, Ikusika, and Pepra. So we'll take the next tribute from the children of our late father, Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman. Tributes by children. Kofi, 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 my dad, my best friend, my confidant, my consultant, my business advisor, my lawyer, my teacher, my mentor. You are the best dad ever. My life journey truly began the day you became my father. Lots of lessons, laughter, and love we have always shared. 
the kind of training you gave me continues to shape me into who I dream to be. Kofi, you are my hero. You taught me to be brave, work hard, and find joy in simple things. You shape me in ways you will never really know that. At age eight, I could handle and manage minor plumbing faults in the home. During Christmas, when we have to slaughter fowl or turkey, when all the older ones run away, I was there with you. I learned very fast and could do it on my own. I still have the book you gave me on my 10th birthday. A woman guide in home repairing. Following you on Saturdays to the site also inspired me to learn about building construction. You gave me the best and most special drawing tools and equipment. Dad, those tools were special and unique. The red routine pencil was awesome. I used it from JSS1 through to the university. Not only was my father a technical man, but I grew up in it. I learned it, and I live in it too. Kofi, your set standards for me were do it right from your heart. Do it at the right time, and always do it up to standard. When exercise books were being covered with brown paper, you always covered mine with white paper. I always felt good when you made and gave me unique things at all times. The best cinema in the whole world was our sitting room. You always made sure it was filled with laughter and jokes. Every minute spent with you was fun, and one could forget of all the worries. I never had a problem unsolved after coming to you. Even on your sick bed, you never stopped checking up on us. I grew up knowing I was the little one in the home, but you made it well known to the older ones that I was a little star. My world grew dimmer the day you left it, but your memories still shine brightest in my darkest hours. Kofi, 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 oh. You are being missed. The year till we meet again. Tribute by Benedicta Coleman. So we'll take the last tribute from the Akrara Ray Church Women's Fellowship. Tribute by Aquarius Church, Manet Chapel Women's Fellowship. 
This quotation, and I quote, for in him we live and move and have our being. Acts 17, 28b, unquote, which is also the motto of the Accra Ray Church Women's Fellowship, perfectly describes our sister AC. She lived and moved and had her being in Christ and is finally at rest in him. Sister AC Coleman Obindakon joined the Accra Ray Church Manet Chapel Women's Fellowship in the year 2011 when she and her husband Bafo Abuko Kofi II joined the Accra Ray Church Manet Chapel. Right from the word go, she did not sit on the fence, but became an active member of the fellowship. The regal manner in which she carried herself and had the name Nanao Nana, and she confirmed that she was indeed married to a Nana. When the fellowship held their elections for that period, she was nominated for the position of treasurer. She accepted and did her work diligently. She went on to become the organizing secretary in subsequent elections. In 2019, she became the vice president for two consecutive terms, ending her tenure in February 2023 when she handed over. Due to her devotion to duty, Sister AC was elevated to a higher position of ex-official member on the current Executive Council of the Fellowship, a position she held till her demise. In all the various positions she held, she worked well with her fellow executive members and had a good rapport with all sisters. Her gentleness and calm nature were evident to all. We will remember the way she called sisters, sis, sis, with that charming smile on her face. Sister AC was generous to her fault. She did not just give up her time, but contributed greatly by donating items and cash during our orphanage and like my visit to the maternity and children's wards. She contributed immensely during the COVID relief to the disadvantaged in the Barcelona area and also to the Senior Correctional Center, formerly Bostal Home. Apart from the donation, she will almost always be part of the delegation that went to give out the donations. You could count on Sister Isi during the fellowship's yearly outreaches and visitations to the elderly sisters. Every Christmas, she supported the team by providing ribbons, wrappers, balloons, etc., to wrap gifts for our children and will also be there physically to partake in the wrapping of gifts. Her attorney as vice president saw her on one occasion providing tables and chairs and doing the decor and set up for the fellowship's dinner party without taking a pessoa. During fellowship meetings, she will not just share spiritual food, but will come along with cupcakes and little giveaways and also teach us songs we could sing during our fellowship week. We remember clearly the little red roses she shared with sisters during last year's Valentine's Day meeting. As the saying goes, good people are like candles. They burn themselves up to give others light. This was what Sister AC did, just to put smiles on the faces of others, especially the disadvantaged. Sister AC, your absence will be deeply felt during our meetings and orphanage visits. You ran your earthly race well, and you are finally home with your maker 
whom you served well. Rest well, sister, and may your soul find eternal rest in the Lord. Demi Fred Dye, Sister Yisi, Dye Niamani Hunun. Thank you. We'll take an anthem from the choir. Dear people of God, we we'll rise to our feet and sing the Methodist hymn number 99. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. We'll sing stanzas 1, 2, and 6. Page 47 of the brochure.
the seat. Stand up. Let us sit. Dear people of God, we are thankful to God for the gift of life that he has given to us. The psalmist says that we slept, we knew nothing, but the grace of God did sustain us. And we are alive this morning by the pure grace and the mercies of God. On behalf of the Akrari Church, we sincerely express our condolences to the families involved and all those that are connected to our dear mother, Mama Mercy Isi Obendako, and our dear father, Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman. It is our prayer that the Most High God himself will strengthen us, he would console us, and grant us the grace to go through the days ahead. May his name be praised. Amen. Let us take our scripture reading from 2 Kings chapter 20, the verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 20, the verse 1. I read. Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. The word of the Lord. Dear people of God, this short text which I just read to you is a message God sent to the king by name Hezekiah. Ezekiah, at a time when he lived, was a king of Judah. And at some point in time, he fell sick. And God, through his prophet Isaiah, sent a message to him. And the message reads, Set your house in order. For you shall die and not live. This king by name Hezekiah was a king that lived for the Lord. He was a king that served the most high God. He was a king that did the very things that pleased God. He was a king that eschewed evil and he loved righteousness. However, when he went down, when he was sick, when he experienced weakness in his body, the Lord sent a message to him that sets your house in order, for you shall surely die and not live. So one would have expected that the Lord will send a message that would suit his heart, a message that would comfort him, a message that is reassuring of God's grace to heal. But here, the Lord says to his prophet Isaiah that this is the specific message I want you to deliver to Hezekiah. I am not bringing him healing. 
But all that I want him to know is that he must set his house in order. For he shall die and not live. So the first part of this text talks about set your house in order. And the second part says that for you shall die and not live. The expression for you shall die and not live tells us that we cannot escape death as humans. This expression resonates with Psalm 89 verse 1, which says, What man can live and not see death? So for you, shall die and not live indicates that Death is inevitable. Death cannot be avoided. In other words, death is certain. And what this says to us is that everybody will die without exception. And that is why Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the verse 1 says, there is a time to be born and a time to die. In other words, your life journey has a beginning and it also has an end. You cannot swap death for life. In our day-to-day -day activities, we encounter people or we experience people at some point in time. They are able to swap some aspects of things that belong to them for other things. So we have people that are able to swap their vehicles for land. There are people that swap phones. And I'm saying that, but for death, we cannot swap it for life. You see, everything in this world operates under the fixed orders of God. And no one can alter it. And so we operate with times and seasons. There is a time for everything. There is a season that governs this world. And when it is time for us to leave this world, there is nothing that can stop it. And that is why King Ezekiel, even after the prophet Isaiah had delivered this message to him. Scripture says that he turned to his wall and he began to pray unto God. And he told God, Lord, remember me for the things that I have done for you. Though the Lord added 15 more years to his age, he passed on. So I'm saying that everything in this world operates under fixed others of God. When God says that for you shall die and not live, he is also saying to us that life in itself is short. Life has an expiry date. Life has an end. Life is finite. And so when you read Psalm 90, the verse 4, this is what Moses says. He says that for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. So he compares thousand years to one day in the sight of God. Again, in Psalm 90, the verse 6, Moses compares the human life to grass. And he says that in the morning, it looks very fresh. By the evening, it dries and withers. The expression morning and evening is indicative that life in itself is short. 
James chapter 4, the verse 14, the writer says that you are like a vapor that appears for a little while and then it vanishes. Job also says to us in Job chapter 14, the first two verses, and he says that man or a woman that is born is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He also flees as a shadow and continues not. The second thing I'm saying is that life is short. When the Lord says that, for you shall die and not live. Number three, he's saying that death is unpredictable. Death is unpredictable. Nobody is guaranteed the next second, the next minute, or hour to live. You do not know when and where your life will end. God can call you at any point in time. Whether you are prepared or not, whether you are ready for it or not, the Lord can call you home. Very often we try to console ourselves by thinking that we will not die any time soon. But death is unpredictable. Sometimes young men and women often think that because they are healthy, they won't die. This situation shows that anyone, no matter their age or health, can be called home by the most high God. And that is why he says to us that there is a need for us to set our house in order. Death is inevitable. Human life is short. And death is unpredictable. For these three things, the Lord encourages us to set our house in order. Talking about setting our house in order, I hear someone saying, I have written my will. I have made ample provisions for my family. My private papers are all arranged in order. Everything is in readiness for the executor when my end comes. But I want to say that these are matters which may and should receive a certain amount of attention. But there are activities, there are duties which are far more important than these things that I have mentioned. None of these things that I have mentioned will prepare you to meet your God. None of these things that I have mentioned will prepare you for the judgment to come. We are talking about setting your house in order. It has to do with reconnecting with your God. It has to do with deepening your relationship with God. It has to do with getting much closer to God. It has to do with doing the very things that will please God. Do you have a relationship with God? Do you do the very things that pleases God? From the text that we read, it is clear that we would not live on this earth forever. A time will come that will that when we will exit. And the big question is, where will you spend eternity? And that is the very reason why the Lord is saying to us that we must set our house in order. 
setting your house in order has to do with getting much closer to God. Having a relationship with the Most High God. And we want to find out from you this morning. Do you have a relationship with him? Bible says he who has the son, the son referring to Christ Jesus, has life. And he who does not have the son does not have life. John 10.10 10 says, For the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says he came so that you and I would have life and have it in fullness. John chapter 3, the verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever will believe in him, whether you are fair, you are dark, you are white, you are black, but whosoever will believe in him, a fanti, an ashanti, an enzima, but whosoever will believe in him, that person will have eternal life. We can only have life, even only if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Like he said in John chapter 14, the verse 6, he says, I am very emphatic. This is unambiguous. He says, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. He says, I am the one that leads to the Father. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the one that connects us to the Father. And we are asking whether we have a relationship with him. We will not live perpetually on this earth. We will exit at a point in time. Where will you spend eternity? Will you spend eternity with the Lord? Or you'll be condemned to eternal damnation? Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 to 50, describes two places that when we leave this world, we would go. And it reads, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. This throne is actually the throne of the Most High God. And Bible says, And books were opened. So this could be books of fornicators. This could be books of murderers. This could be books of, of, of liars. Books were open. I don't know whether your name appears in any of these books. But scripture says that another book was open, which is the book of life. So there are the books, and we have the book. Where do you have your name? Do you have your name in the books or in the book? It continues by saying, the dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it. And death and hate gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what they had done. The verse 15 anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire, which is the second death. So when our life ends on this earth, there is another life to live. So there is actually life after this life. And we are asking whether we would spend eternity with God or would go into eternal damnation. If there is something that at this point we would desire so much, 
It has to do with deepening our intimacy with the Lord. It is about time we made a bold and intentional decision for the Lord. Bible talks of a man by name Enoch. At the age of 65, Scripture says that he had not lived for God, but at the age of 65, he took a bold step. He made an intentional decision for the Lord, and he told God that, henceforth, I want to live for you. Scripture records that for the next 300 years of Enoch's life, he lived and he followed the Lord. May that be our portion in the name of Jesus. The other day, Ruth said to Naomi, and that was also an intentional, a deliberate, a purposeful statement that she made. She said, wherever you go, I would go. And wherever you be, I would be. Your people will be my people. And your God. That God that you have served, that God that you cherish, that God that you love, that same God will be my God. There is also a man by name Zacchaeus. And scripture says when he encountered Jesus, he saw how filthy he was. And he also decided that he would take an intentional stand for the Lord. And so he told Jesus that I want to draw closer to you. I want to draw closer to God. I want to know God the more. And so those that have extorted monies from, I want to re restore it or give it back to them in four folds. And I would also split my property into two. And I'll give half to the poor. That was an intentional thing that he did. We have also heard about the story of the prodigal son. Scripture says that when he came to his senses, he decided that he would go back to his father. For the rest of our days on this earth, the Lord is saying to us, that we must set our houses in order. For we are not guaranteed tomorrow. I pray that if we haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we will receive him. In Romans it says that if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you would be saved. So if we haven't given our lives to Christ Jesus, then there is a need for us to give our lives to him so that when he comes in his glory, we we'll would have a share in his kingdom. If we have also given our lives to Christ Jesus, then we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Let us remember what the Lord said. That it is not the very people that say, Lord, 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 would make it into the kingdom. But the very people that do the will of God. We pray and we seek for strength. We pray and we seek for grace. We pray and we seek for wisdom. That God will help us to live lives that would please him. I pray that when the Lord descends in his glory, we would not miss heaven, but we would have a share in his kingdom. May God's name be praised. Amen. Let us pray. The choir should help me sing, I surrender unto Jesus. want to sing this song. As we sing this song, I want you to talk to God. God is here with us. Scripture says, wherever two or three will gather in his name, he will be there with them. Talk to him. His word says that if we confess our sins, 
One, he's faithful. Two, he's just. Three, he would forgive us. And four, Bible says he would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word of the Lord says that as the east is far from the west, so will the Lord forgive us. Regardless of the sins that you have committed, the Lord is able to forgive you and bring you much closer to himself. Don't miss this opportunity. Renew that covenant with the Lord. Rededicate yourself to the Lord. Yield to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord. And ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Continue to pray that the Lord will have mercy on you. Talk to God, pray to him that Father save me from eternal damnation. Lord, I want to make it to heaven. He's saying to us this morning, set your house in order. It goes beyond preparing your will. It goes beyond making ample provision for your family. What about your soul? Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. Heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And that is why Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. You cannot have access to this place if you haven't prepared yourself enough. Talk to God to deal with your weaknesses. Lord, deal with my weaknesses. Lord, deal with my challenges. Lord, I want to live to please you. Lord, help me. Let this be your cry. He says when you hear his word, Harden not your heart. Harden not your heart. Let us pray. We continue to give you praise and thanks, most high God, for a time like this and for feeding us with your unadulterated word. We thank you for prompting us to set our houses in order. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus and we ask for grace and strength to be able to do this. By our own strength, Lord, we would fail. But Lord, we are calling on you to help us for the rest of our lives on this earth. Help us to walk faithfully before you. And when you come in your glory, may we have a share in your kingdom. We thank you. We give you praise for an answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we all rise and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe. Please let us sit.
Dear people of God, it is now time for us to give our offerings. And the tradition is that we would do two offerings. And so you would see two bowls that are properly labeled. One that says to the family and the other to the church. Please let us give and give bountifully to support the family and also the ministry of the Accra Rich Church. Whatever goes into the family bowl would be given to the family and whatever also is put into the church's bowl will come to the church. Please feel free to give in any currency. You can give in hard currency, soft currency. If you have US dollars, you can give British pounds, Japanese yen, <laughs> Dubai dirham. Every currency <laughs> is duly accepted here and it will be properly acknowledged. God bless you. The choir will lead us to take the offerings. VQ number GB 843422. Please attend to your car. GB 8434-22. Please attend. Yes, 
Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give to us to give and to support the advancement of the gospel. We declare this offering is sanctified and consecrated and to purify for advance of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All too soon we are coming to a close and we will take notices. Announcement from the family. Please, we are still in service, so let's minimize uh, talking. Thank you. Yes. Um, on behalf, on behalf of the families, uh, I would like, first of all, to thank the clergy. Uh, Reverend Kisi and the supporting ministers who took charge to uh, bless Mr. Coleman and the daughter AC on their ways to eternity. Uh, we say thank you, Reverend Kisi and the clergy. Uh, also, all those who came from near and afar on behalf of the families of Mr. Coleman and AC, uh, I want to say, may God bless you. At some point in life, we are faced with trials and tribulations, and always we have friends and loved ones who come to assist us, we say, may God bless you. May God bless you. Uh, after the blessing, the ashes will come round to tell us something. We have ashes here. They will tell us where to go and uh, what they have for us. So let us be patient for the ashes. They will be coming around. So thank you. Thank you. May God bless you. Please, we are being informed that God willing tomorrow, the Thanksgiving service will come off and it will take place at the Accra Ridge Church, Main Ridge. Initially, we planned to hold the service at Manet, but there is an ongoing work at the place, and so, God willing, tomorrow, we are all meeting at Main Ridge at 10.30 a.m. for the Thanksgiving service. Please, let's take note. Also permit me to introduce the clergy in our midst. So the first on the list is the Right Reverend Samson Kweku Jabin, Methodist Minister and also the Coordinating Minister at the Accra Red Church. Papa, let's see you. We have Reverend Andrew Ojao, National Director, Ecumenica and Social Relations at the head office of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. We have Apostle S.O. Asante, Area Head, Kanishi Church of Pentecost. We also have Reverend Father Precious F. E. K. Nuchuga, St. Mark Catholic Church.
We have Reverend David Benedict Coleman. We also have Reverend Gottfried Emmanuel Quigrin. So during the pre barrier, we had Reverend Kofi and Kama Samwa joining us, and also Reverend Father Francis Otin Biwa. They have left to undertake an equally important assignment. Is anybody? We have Reverend Festus Jabba. Action Chapel Adenta Branch. And my name is Reverend Frank Kissy, Presbyterian Minister Accra Reche. Thank you. It is now time for us to pray for the respective families here. The family of our dear mother, Mrs. Mercy Isi Obin Dako, and that of our dear father, Mr. Thomas Hatton Coleman. If the family members are here. Please rise to your feet as we pray and commit you into the care of the Most High God. Shall we bow for prayer? Let us pray. Great God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have come into your presence, giving you all the praise and all the thanks for your goodness and for your mercies towards us. This is difficult for us, and yet we trust in your mercies and in your love. Your word says that in all things, we should give thanks and praise to your name. And so, Lord, we thank you for the life of Mr. Coleman. And we also thank you for the life of our dear mother and sister, A.C. Obedako. We thank you for these lives that you gave to us. And of all the benefits that we receive from them. Yes, indeed, they were a blessing unto us. You have given them to us in your own wisdom and power. You have taken them unto yourselves. May your name be praised. Father, there is a vacuum in our hearts. There is pain and we are hurt within. But Father, we look up to you. You are our comforter. You are our strength. And you will keep us according to your word. For those who put their trust in God, will never be put to shame. Father, sustain us, comfort us, and strengthen us. Cause us to love you and draw closer to you in these times. Your word has told us this morning that death is a certainty and definitely is going to come someday. Help us to prepare our hearts. We pray for the family. May they love you. May they serve you all the days of their lives. May they seek to draw closer to you because it is only in you that we have life and that we have life everlasting. Take care of us and supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We'll take our closing hymn. The uh, Presbyterian hymn 545, five. Rock of Ages, cleft for me. Page 47 of the brochure. That we rise to see.
Let us now receive benediction. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant bring back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of, of the sheep to life again, equip all of you with every good thing to do his will. And may he continue to work in us that which is always pleasing in his sight. To him be glory forever and ever. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us forevermore. Amen. Thank you. The service is over. Let us go out in peace to love and to serve the Lord. So, distinguished Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the ashes will be coming to see you. Yes, the ashes. They will be coming to see you. And they will invite you in groups, in groups, please. So, if they tell this group to go, please, you can go. Then after a few Ever minutes, then they will tell another group to go to where they invite you to, please. So, the ashes, please, start to do your work. Also, after that, after the invitation, uh, we start with the funeral rites. The funeral rites. Yes. Uh, we have those who receive donations. Uh, we have the table here. We have the table in front of me here. 
those who receive donations. Please, you can donate if you want to. If you want to. Eh, wonga wujin sabo. Wawo mincheng heya wapatanasi. Ube se ube bonsa. Ube tuma behu onwa. Efe yi. Eh, bribia mube num. Eni bribia mube di. Yewo mranti ni mababia. Wobeshe na wafremu ako bebi. Bebi nu ehosa. E inti ye nji na kwa. E nji ye. Mr. Iu, ahimufuna e wumnu, ahimufuna e wum, e ye papo sofu, e ni asofuna e wahano, wo bebia, wo be mamako, e inti e ura, shishobi, shishobi nomra menchenga, nomfa honko, e papo sofu, e ni asofunu muo bebia, wo demreko, Mone yenye na nomu ahimfuno, obibe di mo ni mno di mo ako inti mstre, ura maubi mra na oni papa eni ahimfuno, wongo. Eura mobi mefa papa sofu no mungo eni ahimfuno. Ashe sunu owa oba kumra. Ashe sunu oba kumra ha. Ome fa papa num unko bebiya esese wokon. I want one of the ashes. I want one of the ashes here.
Here, for the funeral right. For the funeral right. After the refreshments, please do come back here. Do come back here. Thank you. And Nana no no Mumra na yawo asha waha or the papa sofa no beko ain't in Nana no no Bomodi bra baby ame we na ababa osha no on famun ko mesremu and Nana no na mobile no Mumra Mumra baby ame we. Eh, no bidi papa sofunum ene nananum beko eh odemu beko Eh, ya damasi, ya damasi. Munya bribi wye pe mumra, ni ya nye yinu wa. Woshe mu wye pe mumra, ni ya nye yinu wa. Eh, ya damasi. Eh, please come back after the refreshments. Come back here. Thank you.